Hello and warm welcome to a new episode of Inspire Africa. I'm Barbara Lindu, coming up. A portable iron that works with a rechargeable battery. The equipment was designed by a young engineer in Goma DRC. It's a very practical solution for people who live in areas with no electricity or with frequent power cuts. Would you sit on a bench and confide in a caring grandmother your problems? The Zimbabwean doctor came up with the idea to address the issue of limited access to mental health services. The topic is still largely taboo in Africa. Lastly, we'll introduce you to a young Sierra Leonean living in South Africa. He created one of the first humanoid robots on the continent. He'll tell us more about his journey and the benefits AI could bring to the continent. It's an everyday life appliance that all of us use, an iron, but how to use it when you live in an area with no electricity or with frequent power cuts? To find out the answer, we had to the Democratic Republic of Congo, where an engineer designed a portable iron that works with a lithium rechargeable battery. In this sewing workshop located in Goma, Eastern DRC, there are two essentials. The sewing machine, of course, and an iron. The seamstresses of the Moda Kalisa workshop are now using a one-of-a-kind iron. This iron is really useful for us because it enables us to reduce our energy consumption. It also comes in handy in case of power outage. With its internal battery, we can work without interruption. Although Goma is one of the largest cities in the Democratic Republic of Congo, with over 2 million residents, many Congolese who live in the eastern province like Jaki face electricity problems. The mother recently opted for the Made in Goma iron, which runs on a lithium battery and is rechargeable. Since I bought this iron, I am satisfied. In the past, I used irons that worked only with electricity or coal. But this one has a rechargeable battery. This means that even without using a power source, I can now do my ironing without any problem. And this really makes it easier for us who live in areas where we rarely have access to energy. A 25-year-old engineer is the father of this innovation. Eli Baraka runs his own company. He made his iron here in this workshop. It took him nearly a year to finalize his project. The advantage of our iron is that it reduces energy consumption, since it does not have to be connected to the electric grid. It is portable and makes it easy for anyone who may need to use it in a place where there is no access to electricity. It is no secret that the world is currently experiencing an energy problem. In many countries, bills are rising and energy consumption is no longer the same. So with our iron, we are looking for ways to save energy. This iron, however, has a disadvantage. It's cost. Customers need about $140 to buy it as much to say that it is not affordable to low-income budgets. Eli Baraka, who financed himself his project, hopes he'll get financial support to develop other autonomous equipment. Topics surrounding mental health, such as depression or suicide, are quite taboo in Africa. In Zimbabwe, a doctor launched an association whose core principle is simple. People who need emotional support meet on a bench to talk about their problems and unload their hearts. Choice Chia is a 43-year-old mother. A few years ago, overwhelmed by the birth of twins and her husband's job loss, Choice thought of ending her life. It was one of these benches where she sat on a day of great distress in 2005 that she believes saved her life. I came to a point where I wanted to commit suicide because I had been blessed with twins and had nothing to give them since I was unemployed. Today, Choice is doing better and runs a small business making perfumes and soaps. In Zimbabwe, about 160,000 people have come to sit on one of these benches in the past two years to confide in a grandmother like 70-year-old Sherry Ziwakayi. 
A lot of people are getting help here. The older and the young come here with their problems. We are also helping the young who are struggling with drug abuse. Zimbabwe's dire economic situation has increased the number of cases of depression and mental disorders, and a large majority can't afford to pay for a therapy session. It was the psychiatrist Dixon Chibanda who came up with the idea of offering free sessions by training elderly women in the basics of behavioral psychology. The mission of the Friendship Bench, which has always been my mission, is to take people out of depression. But our big ambitious uh, vision is to have a friendship bench like this within walking distance everywhere, not only in Zimbabwe, the whole world. This vision is already materializing as the Friendship Bench Initiative has now found a friend in football's world's governing body, FIFA. In collaboration with Chibanda, FIFA and Qatar have temporarily installed 32 benches that represent the number of teams competing at the 2022 World Cup. Before you find out who our guest is, first take a look at the robot he designed. Hello. Sayabona, Dumelang fellow South Africans, I am the first humanoid robot built in... This humanoid robot can hold a simple conversation in English. It was designed by Abdul Malik Tejansi, 29-year-old Sierra Leonean who lives in South Africa. Hello, Abdul Malik. How did you come up with this idea? In 2014, 16, I was in India to study. So which gave me the idea to come back to Africa and build Africa School of Technology. Say, so you know what? I had to go to this just to get this knowledge. Why can't I just create it in Africa for my people? So that's how Africa School of Technology was created. And now when people are advocating about 4IR and then I said, you know, let me just build the robot. So I cannot just go to school and tell them robots is in the future, but these kids only see it on movies. And then I never knew I was building the first humanoid robot in Africa. I actually, to be honest with you, I was just building the robot. Africa School of Technology was about to turn five years, which was in June, July, on the 8th of July. I said, I'm going to do an event where I'm going to celebrate a five years milestone of being operational. And then this robot going to show what Africa School of Technology is capable of doing. And at the event, Africa School, the robot was delivered in the welcome address to our audience. So when during that time, we got to know that um, we built the first robot in the continent. So you worked on this project during several years. Did you face any difficulty? Each and every component of the robot was built in this office and with a 3D printer. I printed everything out. And then, yeah, printing it, it took me 1,300 hours just to print. That's how long. And then, yeah, coding it, writing the code, making a mistake. And then, so um, I remember your friends that I spoke with that um, they're in the tech space and I told them I'm building a human life. They'd be like, I, I want to see. And then because it was a, absolutely a, a secret thing, it was day and night, the challenges after work day and night. They were not surprised, they were just shocked to know that it can be achievable to build a human life in Africa. Leaving the technological exploit aside, could you explain the purpose of this type of robot to the people who don't know much about this kind of technology? Artificial intelligence is to impact human lives in certain ways. And then we saw what COVID did to the world. Um, people were lonely and bullying. I think with human eye and AI features, capabilities can allow human interaction. So let's say you bought your home, you have anyone to talk to. You can actually have a conversation with a full human eye robot. Um, we have AI technologies that I believe will assist our economy and then will assist challenges that we're facing in the continent. Uh, these are from disability to information related and economic growth. One last question, what are your ambitions, your long-term goals? I think my, 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 my main ambition is education. It's a field I'm already in. Me alone cannot do all the job, but if I have thousands of people I can give these skills, these thousand people will inspire millions of other Africans. The goal is to make our continent great. When people speak about the next Elon Musk, Steve Jobs, they should speak about people from Africa. I just want to pass the knowledge, but I look forward, I say, even in my grave to say one day when you talk about highly tech people in the world, then they should mention people from Africa now. I think it's our time. 
Abdul Malik Tejansi, thank you for your time. And thank you for having me. Um, absolutely tremendous um, moment for us to be together and be able to talk. I appreciate it a lot. It's almost the end of the show. I hope you enjoyed all these African initiatives. I leave you with hyper-realistic portraits by a young Kenyan artist. His name is Eddie Ocheng. He lives in Nairobi. And as you can see, no tiny detail escapes his brush. Enjoy his talent. I'll see you soon.